what did we say the big question was for you? Um, I think yesterday we, oh, we, uh, we asked a question about how you became an instructor as, as basically a civilian. Uh, how, how did that path take? Because I've got some friends, and me included for that matter, I would like to be an instructor, but uh, that I feel is a, a path fraught with danger because there's a lot of really bad instructors out there. Yeah, um, I became an instructor because someone told me I should, and I don't think that was necessarily a great reason to do it, but that's sort of what the reason was. And I've, I've talked with, I actually did an interview with Craig Douglas sort of about this, and I think oftentimes when people get into instruction, I'm not saying everyone gets into it for the wrong reason, but I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people get into instructing because they are looking for some sort of validation of themselves or special, you know, I am an instructor now and that uh, should, you know, give me extra credit or something like that, right? And ultimately, I think the correct reason to become an instructor is because you are deeply concerned about your students and you can hopefully help them along on their specific journey and pretty much everything you do should be like hey this is going to help make the students better and i kind of understood that uh at least at a base level but i don't think i had fully you know really really gotten it until i had an experience where melody and i were teaching up in afraid of washington and we do the introductions at the beginning of class and as we're going around doing the introductions, there was one woman in class that was very clearly upset before the class even started, uh, didn't even get to her yet. So I was kind of like, all right, something's up here, but I didn't know what, and you know, some people have anxiety around guns or training or something like that. I thought it might be something like that. And anyway, we get to her and, uh, you know, hey, who are you? And uh, what do you do? What brought you here? And she goes, well, my husband was always the one that was going to take care of me and our kids. Uh, but then he got sick and we decided I should probably know how to do this. And come to find out that this gentleman had a terminal illness. Um, and one of the things that, you know, was going to make him feel better and make them feel better was knowing that his wife was going to be able to take care of herself and their children after he was gone. And, you know, so that's a two-day class, and it was not local to them, so she had had to drive and get a hotel the night before, and I believe he ended up dying 27 days later. So, and afterwards I thought about that. I thought about the trust and faith to where you know you have very little time left and to you know say hey uh, we're going to spend four days apart when there is not much time left so that you can go and do this thing um, I spent a lot of time replaying that class I'm like did I do everything I could did I you know teach this class to the best of my ability. In general, was I taking things with the seriousness that the faith the students are putting in me deserve? Um, and I, I think I was, but I don't know, and I didn't know. And even looking back on it, I still don't know. And I'm, I'm prone to uh, uh, being very hard on myself, so hopefully it's just that, but you know, after, afterwards, uh, it just, I kind of decided, like, people are trusting me. Um, they're trusting me with their time. They're trusting me to, you know, give them the best information to the best of my knowledge. And, you know, that deserves a level of seriousness that I don't, I hope, I hope everyone is doing that, that is teaching what I don't. I mean, I know for a fact not everyone is. There's some people that are just doing it because, like, you know, they want to they have the red shirt 
at their agency or, or whatever, but at the end of the day, if we get this wrong and someone needs it, uh, someone dies, you know, or if we get it wrong, uh, someone can die right there on the line if we are not paying 100% attention. So as far as why I got into instructing, um, really bad reasons. As far as why or, you know, why I keep instructing, uh, it's certainly not for the money. Um, you know, it's certainly not for the money. Uh, and I try very hard to let people know, like, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be any prestige that comes along with this. I don't want there to be. Um, but I'm, I'm taking it very seriously. And I am hopeful that, you know, something I say or teach someone will be useful and help them grow and if God forbid they ever need it, uh, that I'll have done a good enough job that they get to go home at the end of the day. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, and it's hard to put a price on that. Let me ask uh, a question I've asked pretty much every instructor, and that is, let's say a loved one of yours uh, decides to buy and start carrying a gun. What sort of standard do you have for them? What sort of standard would you hope that they'd be able to obtain? And this is always uh, a little bit fraught with peril because so many of us are hobbyists and we simply enjoy the process. So, you know, as Melody mentioned, there's a lot of people with no real skill, they've never taken a class, and they successfully defend themselves. But if this was someone you loved, what sort of standard would you hope that they would be able to obtain? What would be reasonable for somebody who doesn't really enjoy the process? The standard that I hope they would be able to obtain is that if something happens and they are there and they are armed, they do not make the situation worse because they have a gun. Um, and that's probably not the question or the answer that necessarily you were looking for, but I think that if something goes on and if someone cannot make the situation worse because they are there with a gun that probably indicates that well at the very least they have uh, the ability to make some decent decisions they have some understanding of use of force uh, have some understanding of maybe timing you know and if they get the gun out and they use it it probably means that they are able to exercise at least some uh, judicious marksmanship, right? So, but what does that look like? I don't know because I don't know what the situation is going to be. But that should be everyone's goal. Um, it should you should not be a detriment because you are there and happen to be armed. Uh, and you know, so what hard skills do you need for that? Probably more than you think you do. Uh, and probably not as many as, you know, some of the hobbyists on the internet think they do. I don't know. And I don't think anyone does. So I could throw a number out, like, be able to draw and hit a target in two seconds. And that doesn't say much about decision making. Um, it doesn't say much about, you know, your avoidance skills. You know, can you, can you leave? Like, you know, are you making an issue occur that doesn't need to occur? Is there a shortcut or an off ramp? But at the end of the day, I think that should be everyone's, you know, number one, as far as what standard do I hold myself to? Uh, don't make it worse. And there are so many, frankly, and this is a shame, but there are so many people that are armed that, you know, do make it worse. Like the, the lady that pulls the uh, you know, the LCP out of a purse and shoots at a shoplifter's car as he's driving away with a bag of cement from the Home Depot, I, argue, I would argue is not helping the situation any. It's not helping two-way rights, is not, <laughs> is not uh, helping her community at all, right? And there's all sorts of examples of stuff like that. You're not the parking lot police, you're not the police at all. Um, could you leave? I mean, oh, someone's in front of me and they're causing an issue at the movies. Oh, they threw popcorn in my face. I better shoot them now. Like, I don't know. How about you get up and 
move back a couple rows or go catch another show. And that's the thing too, is any altercation you bring a gun to is now a gun altercation. There's at least one there. Um, I particularly don't want to be in an altercation involving a gun, even if I'm the one that brought the gun. So, yeah, for anyone watching, uh, what should your goal be? I don't know. Don't make things worse. It's a good place to start, probably. It's a good goal. It's a good goal. So you're saying thinking is, is of course, uh, the more important than the hard skills, and that's that's very reasonable. Uh, I try sometimes. That's the thing, though. So let's say you have a half second draw to shot from concealment to a three by five at 25 yards. That is awesome. But unless you know when and how to press that button to use that skill, it's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything at all. And, you know, the reason why we focus on the hard, the hard skills so often is because they're objective. You know, they're measurable. Uh, you know, they're not, uh, there's not an acknowledgement of the ambiguity or uncertainty involved. So they're more reassuring to people and don't have anything to do with probably the parts that actually matter. And don't get me wrong, like, you know, good draw to first shot, that's great. But if you don't know when, it doesn't really matter that much. Right on. Okay. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you very much.